So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service today. As Mike reminded us, our journey of Lent as we follow Jesus into the wilderness. Um, just a few notices before we start. The first is that um, during Lent, there will be two home groups meeting on Mondays, on Monday mornings and on Monday evenings. And if you need links to either of those, then please ask and we will get you set up. Um, and make use of those two. Uh, the morning one is following a book on the Lord's Prayer called Thy Will Be Done, and in the evening they'll be looking at Christ in the Psalms. Apart from that, during this week, a reminder, particularly to those of you who are part of the um, Shipham uh, family, uh, that on Wednesday morning it's the funeral service of Josie Griffin in Cheltenham, uh, so if you would remember her with love and affection on Wednesday and her family as they grieve. Um, last um, is that if you are short of something to read during Lent, I have one of the Lent books uh, spare. It's called Rooted in Jesus and it's subtitled Lent Reflections on Life in Christ. It's the last one I've got. So yeah, first come, first serve. If you'd like it, then please ask. So we begin our service today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. So our first hymn today, the hymn 40 Days and 40 Nights, Thou Wast Fasting in the Wild. Thank you. 
in this time of penitence as we look back and reflect over our life with God. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And our two colleagues. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we hear from the Scriptures, First Peter, reading from the letter of the first letter of Peter, and then Jill reading our Gospel. A reading from the first letter of Peter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which was pre prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with, and with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was, with, he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. 
and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, take our hearts and minds and open them to your truths. Amen. Well, we've started Lent and we're now thinking of the 40 days which Jesus spent in the wilderness. John's gospel ignores this altogether. Matthew and Luke look at details at some of the temptations that Jesus suffered. But it, as is so often the case, Mark does his own thing. His gospel starts with Jesus being baptized, coming out of the water, the spirit comes upon him in the form of a dove, he hears the voice from heaven, you are my beloved son, in you, I am well pleased. Now, there seems to be an element of violence in this. The heavens are torn apart and the spirit immediately drives Jesus out into the wilderness where he is tested for 40 days. Mark doesn't tell us the form which this testing takes but the location of the testing is significant. By this time, the Jews were a settled nation and lived mainly in cities or villages, but their history was very different. Abraham, the father of the race, was a nomad used to living in the desert. Moses, when he fled from Egypt, also lived in the desert as a shepherd. And it was here that he had the vision of God speaking to him from the burning bush, calling him to go and lead his people out of slavery in Egypt. The Israelites lived in the desert for 40 years, during which time God transformed them to make them into his own people. Later on, the prophets, especially Elijah and Elisha, were associated with the desert. And of course, Jesus had just come from John's baptism and John was another son of the desert. And so for the Jews, the desert was very much a place to meet with God. It was here that he called the Jews and gave them their code, the Ten Commandments. And so what could be more appropriate than for Jesus to seek out the wilderness in order to clarify for himself the mission to which he had been called. But the desert was also a place of danger. In the time of Jesus, there were still dangerous wild animals living there. And more importantly, its bleak, hostile and lifeless nature led it to be thought of as a place of evil spirits. In fact, Jesus went into the wilderness to confront Satan on his home turf. Well, this may be very interesting, but what does it have to do with our keeping of Lent? In Orthodox spirituality, the spirituality of the Russian and Greek Orthodox churches, there is a strand of teaching called Pustinia, which is, I understand, Russian for desert. 
And the concept is that it is a, we find a place, often in the Orthodox tradition, it's a small hut, which is sparsely furnished, where we can go and meet with God. Now, finding a place of distraction that is distraction free is not easy in this time of lockdown. But we can try and find for ourselves a corner where we can shut ourselves away. Some may be lucky enough to have a spare room or even a garden shed, whether it's a man's shed or not. But for others, it might just be a chair away from the television, computer, radio and phone. A place where we can sit quietly and be alone with God. And there are those who do that and make it clear to their household that when they are sitting on that particular chair, they are just not available. And so finding somewhere away from the hustle and bustle where we can just think about God. That can be a way of keeping Lent. Now, of course, we're not going to be able to concentrate on God for however long it is we set aside. Our minds are like butterflies, they flit around. But one of the most important things about prayer is when it flits, you bring it back to God again. And I remember being told by one priest that doing this for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, just bringing your mind back to God is actually a very, very good basis for prayer. And so perhaps that's the first thing that we need to pick up from this reading for our Lenten keeping, spending time uninterrupted with God. Now, most of us would not feel at all comfortable about seeking out Satan in his home territory to do battle. But what about confronting evil on our territory? That part of us which is constantly under attack. The area of weakness, the area of our traditional sins. The ones that we know we're just going to give in to. Where we are especially vulnerable. How about confronting those whilst resting in God's presence and allowing him to reclaim that area of our life, which is spoilt by evil. We can ally ourselves with Jesus here. In the other gospels, we hear of him confronting those temptations which posed the greatest threat to his ministry. So let us ask for his help in opposing those which compromise us, our faith, and our witness. The other thing about this gospel is that Jesus was not alone in the wilderness. He was there with angels. And God's messengers will be with us as well if we do that. And then, like Jesus, we shall be able better to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of God. And to him be praise and glory. Amen. Holy Spirit, although we cannot be together in church today, we ask that you would be with each one of us as we pray in your name and unify our prayers into one voice. 
We pray for those who are feeling alone in lockdown, either because they live alone or they do not feel loved or valued by those around them. And we pray for ourselves when we feel alone. Grant that through the power of your Holy Spirit, we will all know that we are dearly loved and deeply held in your care. We thank you for all those who are volunteering in so many ways to keep people in touch at the moment. Help us to keep being alert to the needs of our neighbours and friends as lockdown continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of love and peace, we ask that you would pray through us for those areas in the world where suffering and struggle are ever present. We lift before you the war-torn country of Yemen and pray especially for the children who are targeted by snipers and their families fearful for their safety. We remember all those in refugee camps today in the countries around Syria, in Myanmar, and elsewhere around the world. For those who do not know if they will ever be able to go home. And we pray for those in Texas who are suffering the effects of the weather, shortages of power and food. We ask that you would spread your loving arms around all these people, wherever they are in the world today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of wisdom, we ask that you would guide our Prime Minister and all our government in the decisions that they are making this weekend on behalf of us all. May they respond to the needs of all our citizens in deciding when to lift lockdown restrictions. And especially to be mindful of those who lack the voice to make their needs heard. Those in care homes, those who are mentally ill, and those in hospital who are restricted in their visiting. Be with all those who are working in these institutions in our parish uh, and locally and for those working in the vaccination programme to keep them going despite the fatigue the last year has brought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who sits at the right hand of the Father and prays for us, be with all those we know who are in particular need, physically, mentally, spiritually. For those on our in touch list, for those that we each know, whether friends, members of our own family, or ourselves. We bring them to you now as your body here on earth. Grant them your peace, your healing and your certain hope in their lives. We ask that you would be with all who grieve the loss of a loved one. For the families and friends of Emma Andes, Jeff Taylor, Peter Garrett, Josie Griffin, Kath Chick, and Derek Law. Comfort them in their grief and surround them with your love. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you to Joe and to Ken. Since we are justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of God's love and peace. And so our hymn now is the hymn, Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. And now we give you thanks because he was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us, and rose again. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who on the night in which he was betrayed at supper with his friends, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Thus we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine 
may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So we invite you to share in this Holy Communion, whether in a physical, tangible way, in bread and wine, or in our imaginations, our hearts and our prayers, we remember God's presence with us now. And so together we pray, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. 
We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those for whom you pray this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so we um, say goodbye to some of you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, some are able to stay on for the chat rooms. That's great. But as we do so, uh, we pray that your journey with God may be good this week, uh, that you may find space to reflect, uh, whether that's in your man cave or in a quiet chair somewhere. May we wrestle with those uh, sins that beset uh, just us. And, and maybe we find a way, a target to do something positive too during this week. And um, I commend the practice of thinking of somebody um, each day to phone or get in touch with and, and um, encourage um, one way or another. And may all of us indeed may those know those angels guarding, protecting and encouraging us. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you to Ken, Joe, Peter um, and Jill and everybody else who's taken part in the service in whatever way today. And may God richly bless you. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>